Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by the Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and by WTIU members. Thank you. Hey, Taylor, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be an astronaut. I would travel to space and explore new worlds or uh, a football star and score the winning touchdown. Well, whatever the future holds for you, on today's show, we'll try to inspire you to follow your passion. You're not alone. You're in the zone. So hang up the phone. And get in the zone. Get in the zone. The Friday zone. You're in the zone. The Friday zone. and welcome to the Friday Zone. It's Career Day here in the Zone, Taylor. You excited? That's right, Emily. We are going to share some stories of some very interesting people who have followed their passion. We've got an aviation expert, a chef, a vet, and more. Sounds exciting. It's a day of inspiring stories to help all of you at home to start thinking about your own passions and what the future might hold for you. So, let's get started. Up first is Rex Hinkle. Ever since he was a boy, he wanted to grow up to soar in the open skies. And after our visit to the Monroe County Airport, we found out that's just what he did. Friday Zone field crew went to the Monroe County Airport to discover some careers that allow you to soar the open skies. If you have a passion about aviation or just like the idea of working with airplanes, then there are many ways you can pursue your interests. We spoke to Rex Hinkle, President and General Manager of Cook Aviation, to find out why he got started in aviation. So I wanted to fly the Goodyear blimp at one time, and the blimp is what really got me excited about aviation. Being in a blimp sparked Rex's curiosity in aviation, and maybe you have similar interests too. But being curious is just the beginning of making what you enjoy doing into a career. It takes a lot of training, hard work, and school to work in aviation. We asked Rex what are the most important qualities for a person to have if they're interested in the field. You have to have integrity. Uh, you have to be honest and a hard worker and, and you have to uh, love to fly and, uh, and also at the same time be on the ground. If you decide to take flying lessons with an instructor, there's a lot to learn about navigating an airplane. Rex took some time to show us some of the basic parts of a beginner style plane. What we have today is a Piper Dakota. This uh, airplane was built in 1982. Uh, the airplane is in fantastic shape. This particular airplane has three blades with a propeller. Some airplanes have just two, where you have one which is 180 degrees different, so there'll be one here in the top and then one coming out the bottom. Some of these things that you see sticking up on top and there might be one underneath, those are called antennas. And antennas help us with uh, tracking signals, uh, and also, if we want to have communication in the airplane, we can talk to control towers and we can talk to people. There are 26 letters in the alphabet, and we have a phonetic name that goes with each one of those 26 letters. And this is what we call the registration number. You'll notice that this airplane begins with an N, and the phonetic name for that is November, and the N states to us that this particular airplane operates in the United States. This is the aileron, and it moves up and down. This is what helps coordinate the airplane as we turn right and left. So if we're going to turn the airplane to the left, we're going to turn the control yoke to the left, and at the same time, we're going to push on the left rudder pedal, which will help coordinate the turn. And at the same time, if you want to climb while you're making a left turn, then you're going to pull the control yoke backwards, and that's cause, going to cause the airplane to pitch up. So, Friday Zone viewers, if soaring above the clouds sounds exciting to you too, then Rex has a suggestion. Why well, go into aviation? Sometimes I've asked myself that several times, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun.
That's so cool. You know, mm. sometimes I like to go to the airport with my family just to pick up our friends and family just so I can see the planes fly. Oh, and another place you can go to experience the work of someone with a fun career is a restaurant. Mm. We met up with restaurant owners Ryan and Chef Luke to talk about how they found their passion. My name is Ryan Andrews, uh, general manager here at Sweetgrass Restaurant. Uh, we're a blend of uh, American and Southern cuisine. We try to bring some flavors of the South uh, along with us to serve uh, to the people here in Bloomington. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina, where we went to school with uh, Chef Luke. Just growing up, being around food, um, being in the bread basket, it was something close to home and close to heart. And, you know, it happened, and, and I just followed the passion. When I was growing up, uh, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. All I knew is that I, I wanted to manage. I wanted to be, be a boss, run a business. Luke and I have known each other for, for a number of years. Uh, wanted to do things for ourselves, uh, be able to have a little bit more control. We, we were really happy to be able to take charge and be able to be, be our own bosses. A lot of people depend on you to be here. If, if I don't show up, um, the food doesn't get made, the food doesn't get prepped, and we're not able to serve the community or to even have an operation. My background is actually in uh, business management and finance, so uh, I'm able to uh, take those management skills and apply them to being able to manage the workforce as well as make sure everybody gets paid on time, paychecks and taxes and all those kind of things. And I'm overseeing quality, integrity, and uh, customer satisfaction on a day-to-day -day basis. So our two main ingredients. We have red bell peppers and uh, sweet Vidalia onions. Uh, I think a lot of the passion started from, you know, from feeding my older brothers and, and trying to gain uh, respect. So I started making grilled cheese sandwiches for my uh, older brothers, and you know I could see how, uh, you know, see how happy and excited they were when I was making sandwiches. And I think that was kind of one of those beginning things in my life where it really propelled me into delving farther into the food uh, aspect of a career. So I went from grilled cheese to lasagnas to house-made pastas and before you know it it's become you know my everyday 24-7 you know eat sleep drink food. The biggest things that I love about uh, working here at the restaurant is be able to see the regulars come in on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, they continue to encourage us because they really enjoy the restaurant so that's extra motivation uh, really makes it worthwhile being able to being able to make people happy on a consistent basis. The most enjoyable part about, uh, about what I do and, and food and being able to see the customer uh, come in looking like they've had a tough day or a tough week and then leaving with the biggest smile they've ever had on their face just because I was able to you know, take a local item or a local ingredient and, and, uh, and give it to them in a way that they've never had. It's definitely motivation to keep doing what I'm doing and, and, uh, and, and keep getting better at what I'm doing. Not all customers are coming in uh, with a smile on their face. You have to be able to turn those, turn those frowns upside down, so to say, and uh, be able to make all your customers happy. Being humble, being able to take constructive criticism um, in a positive way and, uh, and, and get better with that and grow with that. So if you don't love what you're doing, you know, I, don't, I don't see how you could, could do it forever. So. Say loving, loving what we do here is, is a big part of uh, a big part of our success for sure. Well, now that we've talked about a couple of fun careers, let's find out how all of those jobs work together by visiting Junior Achievements this town in its Friday Zone flashback. The Fridays on Field crew traveled to the Junior Achievements of Central Indiana to learn more about the JA BizTown, an interactive exhibit designed to help kids grow as citizens within a community, as well as learn and practice valuable skills at a young age to carry with them into adulthood. The BizTown consisted of 15 businesses run and supervised by the fourth grade students from Greenwood Christian School, Columbus Signature School, and Greenfield Home School, each having specific jobs and duties to fulfill throughout their stay at BizTown. 
we spoke with Meredith, the mayor of this town, to find out a little more about her daily duties. I fill out paperwork and I check how things are going here and I sign official papers. And all of those official papers and paperwork are designed to help Meredith and fellow classmates. When we're adults, so we know more about how to run, like how to be prepared for a business. Before the citizens of BizTown can get any work done, they have to apply for a loan to get their business started. Each business around BizTown has a particular product or service that they offer, including food and dining from Steak and Shake, mail and parcels from FedEx, and even recycling services from Ray's Recycling Center. We spoke to Luke Petty, CFO of Ray's Recycling, to learn a little more about his roles and responsibilities in BizTown. Well, we recycle objects um, in the back. We have three orange bins where we have one for aluminum, one for um, newspaper, and one for um, just plain paper. We asked Luke why his job at BizTown was important to the operation of this community. Well, basically, in our town, we have so many kids here that everybody if everybody just used the trash cans, it would pile up, and by now we do not have a functioning landfill, so we would not have no place to put all of that trash. Within their time at BizTown, the employees will get two paychecks from their CFOs. With the paychecks, businesses have to write checks to pay their bills as well as buy things from other businesses in order to stimulate the BizTown economy. We spoke with CFO of JA Bank, Jared, about what his classmates and he learned prior to visiting BizTown. Um, I learned how to write checks, fill out deposit slips, and write in the check register. And I also learned how to communicate with others without having any arguments. But here at this town, it's hard work, but you can't have all work and no play. While people are going about their business, they probably have their radios tuned to Thomason, the disc jockey at the radio station. I'm really good with computers and picking out good songs and stuff, and play music so everybody can enjoy their job and have fun. Whether your job is to collect and distribute mail, read the electrical meters, design signs, or sign important documents, at JA BizTown, every job is important to help maintain a balanced, functioning community and to shape and mold each individual into the best citizen he or she can be. So, Friday Zone viewers, next time you're in town, J.A. BizTown invites you to check them out on the web at www.jaindy.org. If you'd like to take a trip to BizTown, ask your teacher if your school is involved in junior achievement, and maybe you can organize a visit for you and your class. Next up, we've got a guest in the zone. Hey Taylor, who do you have over there? Well, Emily, I have Robert Black with me. He is the women's basketball athletic trainer here at Indiana University. Thanks for coming in, Robert. Well, thank you for having me. So, Robert, as an athletic trainer, what is it that you do? I take care of uh, injuries, illnesses, uh, anything that may happen to the women's basketball players. Okay, and what do those illnesses and injuries uh, cover? Oh, anything from sprains, um, dislocated fingers, okay. uh, colds, okay. uh, anything that that they really are having difficulty taking care of themselves. You know? okay. And the, the rule of thumb is if it hurts, if you're having problems with it, you call me. Okay, cool. Yeah. And so we can get it managed. Cool. And so how long have you been doing this now? I've been doing this now for almost 30 years. Nice. So you're a pro at this, right? I've been doing it all a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, what is it that got you into this field? Well, I started off as a high school coach and uh -huh. Even, even that, several years ago, we, we really didn't have athlete trainers, and right. you always had kids getting uh, sprains and, and having problems and not knowing where to turn mm -hmm. and how to get them uh, taken care of. So my interests evolved from there. Cool. And, and, and what process did you have to take? You, you realized at a younger age, I'm sure you were always a, a sports fan. Yes. Um, and so um, what steps did you have to take to become a trainer? Like if, if someone else wanted to become a trainer, what are the things that they have to do? Well, from... Uh, from that perspective, uh, you, you, you know, you go to school. Uh, I went to uh, University of Wyoming where okay. I got my uh, bachelor's degree. Okay. And that's where my interest really kind of peaked. Cool. And I had an opportunity to come here to Indiana University. Mm -hmm. uh, Indiana has one of the oldest and strongest programs in the country mm -hmm. for athletic trainers. Came here, finished my degree here, and I always thought I'd go back to the high school mm -hmm. uh, just because that was my first love and I fell in love with the college setting. Cool. And I've just been here ever since. Wow. 
So we talked about some common injuries earlier. You said knees and ankles. What are some of the things you brought with you here today? Well, what I <clears throat> what I brought is is a couple, well, several protective braces. Uh, with the women's basketball program, everyone has to either be taped okay. or wear some kind of brace for prevention. Okay. So we're always trying to prevent injuries to try to keep as many people on the floor mm -hmm. playing as possible. So these are two types. The most common type uh, that you'll find is a lace-up brace. Okay. And it's almost equivalent to having tape on, except the good thing about that is that when it gets loose, you can pull your shoe open, mm -hmm. tighten it up, and you still have a good uh, good solid support. Cool. Uh, this is a custom knee brace uh -huh. that we fabricate for uh, individuals that have like chronic knee problems. Okay. This particular one is a rotation type brace All right. for an individual to kind of keep her uh, straight ahead. But we have someone kind of come in, measure her uh -huh. uh, type thing. They send it out back to the manufacturer. Oh, wow. And the brace is sent to us in about 24 so hours. So these are all specifically made for this an individual is a player. Made. This wow, is a custom really brace. Cool. That's great that you guys spend that much time and, and, and effort, you know, actually tending to that person's injury. Um, so, um, can you show us a little bit how you, how you would actually treat someone? Oh yeah, that, that would be a problem if okay. I have an injury. Emily, come here. I think Emily's always injured, so let's go check her out. Okay, I know. What did you do, do this that. time? I know, I know. It sounds so bad, but my intramural season is coming up, and I mean, I didn't know if you were going to be here today or not, but my left ankle is so sore. Hmm. Well, why don't we jump up on the table so we can take a look okay. at that? Why don't you go ahead and pull your shoe and sock off? Okay. Well, it's really interesting is that you know, for a lot of, lot of us mm -hmm. uh, in the athletic training profession, we're right there at practice. Would you slide yeah. back, please? Mm -hmm. We're right there at practice, so a lot, of the in, a lot of the injuries that we have, we actually see yeah. right there on the spot because that's what we're doing. We're so pacing, you know. You know. Yeah. I mean, we're in those professions where you kind of like stand around and wait for something to happen mm -hmm. type mm -hmm. thing. So uh, with something new like this, you're going to always start off with a series of questions for your evaluation or assessment. What okay. we have to understand, athletic trainers do not diagnose. Right. We just assess it and determine if it's severe enough who we're going to send it to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the first question I would ask, what happened? Well, I was actually going up to get a rebound, and when I came back down, I stepped on one of the other player's shoes, and so my ankle kind of rolled to the left. Okay, rolled to the left. So mm -hmm. it rolled out this way or did it come this way? That way. Okay, can you point to the spot that it's the source? Actually, just right here. Okay, so with that, as I, as I get into all my questions and uh -huh. everything, what I would do is that I'm going to start off and I'm just going to, first of all, I'm going to look at it, you right. know, and I'm looking for anything that's abnormal. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Any know, bones swelling, sticking out. <laughs> swelling, discolor, you know, anything that's color changes or anything like that. Okay. And then I'm just going to come down and I'm going to put my, my fingers are going to do all the work for me. Okay. Okay, because I'm going to touch those areas that are vital. And so if I take this skeleton right here and mm -hmm. hold it right here, this is what's underneath all this layer of tissue, mm -hmm. right? So my first palpation point, because she says she's sore here, will probably be right here on this point. Okay. You know, just to find out how sore she is. And I have to remember there's ligaments underneath here, and ligaments connect bone to bone. Okay. And they also keep the ankle stable. Okay. All right. So I will be looking in here for this ligament on the lateral side, mm -hmm. or the outside of the ankle. So there's one right there. There's another ligament right here I will look at because okay. she said it went in that way. Right, right, So right. these ligaments will probably get stretched. So I would mm. touch that, see how sore that was. I'd come back here for this third ligament back here okay. as well. Also while I'm palpating here or touching this area, there's a long tendon that kind of comes down and attaches right here. And so with those kinds of ankle sprains, it comes right through here. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you stretch that. Ah, all okay. right. And so these are all my stabilizers. So when she goes this way, all these tissues are being stretched. Mm -hmm. Now, once I complete that evaluation on this side, I'm going to make sure I check out the rest of the ankle. Okay. And make sure that there's nothing else there. And so once you figure out what you're supposed to do, what's the next step? Okay. Once I figure out what it is, I want to do a couple of other things. I'll have her just uh, bring your toes back for me, point them down. Okay. Take them to the outside, take them to the inside. I just want to look at a range of motion. Okay. And I'll do that. That was active. Mm -hmm. I'll do a quick passive the same way just to see what the ankle's doing. Mm -hmm. Then the final thing I'll do is what we call like a, just a stress test, just to check the stability of it. And I'll just grab the ankle this way, and I'll just pull it just to see how much 
it comes forward, it moves forward. Okay. And to know if this is abnormal or it's not right, I would just come over here and look at the and other see side. What is. Mm -hmm. Right. So if it looks like it moves too much, it's says ask you to remove everything over here, and I do exactly the same out. thing. So I would compare this to this. Great. Now, once I determine that we have an ankle sprain mm -hmm. itself, I say, okay, what I want to do, I want to ice you up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll just take a couple ice bags and we'll put them on. Would you, Taylor, would you pass me that wrap right behind you right yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I would just take the wrap. Okay. Please hold that. Thank mm -hmm. you. And I always have my athletes kind of participate. Right. Yeah, you because know, a lot of times I want to check their flexibility yeah, too yeah, in the yeah. back and the <laughs> hamstrings and everything. And Make sure they're all in functioning order. Yeah, there. You know, if I keep them involved, then it's going to go a lot better. <laughs> It's a little bit nicer for you. And this too. is where a lot of a lot of times we talk about that principle of rice, uh -huh. rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Okay. This is the first stage of that. Okay. Okay, because the ice is there, the compression is the wrap. And then what I will have Emily do is find a spot somewhere where she can lay back. We'll just elevate the ankle for about 20 minutes while we're icing. Mm -hmm. And then we come back and we can re reassess it. Sometimes they're so sensitive that you can't get a lot on the first assessment. Cool. Well, thanks, Robert. Yeah, but Robert. we'll do that. Awesome. Well, while he tends to Emily's injury, let's investigate another career in this zone investigation. My name is Dr. Christina Swanson. I'm a veterinarian at the College Mall Veterinary Hospital, and I treat dogs and cats. Oh. As a veterinarian, on a daily basis, I see pets that are either sick or injured, and we're trying to help them back to normal. Um, we also see well animals, and we're trying to keep them well. So we'll be seeing them for routine tests to make sure that they don't have problems. There's a whole array of different procedures that we might be doing. All right, so we're going to do an exam. You have to have patience because the animals don't understand why we have to look in their ears, listen to them, take blood samples, or do different things. Oh, my goodness. We'll be seeing them for routine vaccinations to make sure that they don't have problems. So you can touch right here. Oh, there it is. There you go. Oh, you're done. Oh, you're so good. <laughs> um, you have to have pretty good people skills because for every animal that comes in, there's going to be an owner. Hi, Priscilla. Okay, so here we have Priscilla who we're going to examine and see if she is healthy. I usually start by listening to her heart with the stethoscope, and we just put the stethoscope right behind her elbow, and that's where we find the heart. She looks like she's a little bit nervous, and that's something we have to deal with here, is sometimes the animals aren't sure what's going to be happening, so we have to try and reassure them. And I usually start up at the head. That way I can pet her and see if we can get her to relax a little bit. But I'm going to be looking at her eyes, we're going to be looking at her teeth. We're looking to see if she has much tartar, and she really doesn't have much. She has a little bit, but not much, so that's good. I'm also going to try and look down her throat. Yes, that's good. I'm going to use an otoscope. We use this to look in her ears, make sure that we don't see any infections or wax, or there can be ticks down in there. And her ears look really pretty clean. And then I'll feel in her abdomen make sure I don't feel anything abnormal. Sometimes we have to address whether or not a dog is overweight or too thin, but she's just right with her weight. I think she's still a little nervous, though, about things. To become a veterinarian, you do have to go to college, and so that's a lot of studying and a lot of developing good study habits and getting some courses in the sciences. There are other careers in veterinary medicine besides becoming a doctor of veterinary medicine. A vet tech is like a nurse is to a doctor, a vet tech is to a vet. I decided to become a veterinarian uh, because um, I never had a dog when I was growing up. I had a cat and horse and sometimes I think it's because I didn't have a dog that I wanted to become a vet and uh, be able to pet animals every day and work with them. We are back with Robert. Now comes the rehabilitation stage. So Emily, yeah. we're going to pretend it's been about three days, mm -hmm. and Emily's in a boot now. So can you explain what happens next? Yeah, basically, you know, at this point, how you feeling? 
I'm feeling okay. Good. This boot has taken a little bit of the pressure off. Okay. That's what the boot does. The boost allows the ankle to rest. Okay. You can still bear weight on it, but you're uh, getting good rest out of it. How long does someone well. wear a boot typically? Until you can walk normal okay. without any pain. Okay. You know, type thing. And so once we get to that point, first thing I'll have her do is just kind of like stand up. Okay. And just see, just pressure on both feet. You feel comfortable? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It feels pretty normal. Okay. So that's, that's good. So next, next thing I say, okay, okay, we've got to do something more challenging as far as, as basketball is concerned. Mm -hmm. Can you stand on your left foot? Yes. Well, good. that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> three days. So, yeah, three, <laughs> three days. Three days, yeah. Well, from there, it's like, okay, we've got to make it a little bit more challenging. So I have two pieces of balance of equ equipment. Okay. One is straight foam, uh -huh. and this one has air in it. Okay. Mm. All right, so this is the progression. We start off something nice and easy right here, one foot up there. And generally, it's stand on there for 30 seconds. Okay. It's three days. Okay, and that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's, that's pretty, pretty good. good. So that's too easy. Okay. That's too easy. Okay. So we're going to make it a little bit more challenging. Let's yeah, I'm trying to get back out. in the game. That I'm one's a little bit, that has a little play tomorrow. air in it. Ooh, this okay. is challenging. And I can feel it really engaging those muscles that I told you hurt. And that's, and that's what it does. It causes the sense mm. organs inside that joint mm -hmm. to fire. So you can really right. see if and that see, ankle has healed itself. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Now, the only problem that you have, there are some athletes that don't have very good balance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. So it might be difficult for, this, for them to do this when they're good, when right. they're healthy. Right, right, yeah. right. From here, we say, okay, we've got to go do some strengthening. Okay. So I would put Emily back up on the table, okay. remove this, have her swing around, and would you slide down here just a little bit for me? Uh -huh. Then I'd have her do a four-way ankle exercise with this T-band. Okay. I pull it back towards you. Oh, have her do set right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, probably about 10 reps. Give it that resistance. And again, we'll go have her pull to the inside now. Pull across. Oh, this is challenging. Right there. Do a set there. And then have her go opposite on the lateral side. P oh, pull out, my. pull out. Come on, pull. <laughs> this is the one that would probably hurt her a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here, because that's where she stretched those tissues, but she's getting right. good work out of that. And then the final one is like pushing down because okay, that's right. what you do when you walk. You have to right, toe right, right. off. Mm -hmm. And so we have well, to complete it, that last one right there. It all feels right. a little well, bit better. Well, that's all the time we have, guys. I'm sorry, Robert, thank you so much for coming in. It's been great learning everything from an athletic trainer's point of view. Thank you. Thanks for healing me. <laughs> well, Taylor, you've got a chance to try this balance board. Let's all do right. it. All right. Well, Come remember, on. guys, to live, learn, and play the Friday Zone way. We'll see you here right here next week. This one's all you. All right. Let's try it. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by the Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and by WTIU members. Thank you.